Hey guys, my name's Jeff. Welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, fantastic. Take a seat and stay a while. If you haven't, take a seat and stay a while because today I am gonna teach you how to invest in ETFs and I'm gonna use this right here to show you how. I just wanna say, if you're just starting out in investing, I totally understand if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed. There's a lot of info out there and I think there are a lot of different people saying you should invest in these stocks or these funds or these ETFs. What I can do is show you a few examples that I think might make sense once you see each of these five segments. This green one represents the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF. The ticker symbol for that is VTI. That invests in companies of all sizes throughout the United States and only in the United States. So we're talking about companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, Berkshire Hathaway, Tesla, Nvidia, Adobe, and on and on. So when you invest in this, you're investing in those large companies, but you're also investing in mid cap companies, which are medium sized companies, and small cap companies, which are the smallest companies. So through this one index fund ETF, you're able to invest in the whole gamut, the whole spectrum of companies in the United States. There are more than 4,000 of them in this ETF, and you do that through one investment. Full disclosure, I invest in this ETF. I started right at the beginning of 2022, and every month on the first of the month or the first trading day, I make a purchase of the same amount of money into these shares. And so I don't really have to think about it. And I don't have to make decisions throughout the year. I just, same amount and it goes into the market and just set it and forget it. So let's look at another possible way to invest. So we've just covered this one. Now, this one here could represent the S&P 500 ETF. So Vanguard has a, S&P 500 index ETF, it's VOO as the symbol, and that invests only in those largest 500 companies, the ones that I mentioned at the beginning when I was describing this, but does not invest in the middle size or the mid cap or the smallest size, the small cap stocks. So if you, for some reason, didn't want exposure to all the stocks, but just the largest 500, VOO could be a good fit for you. So moving on, let's take a look here. This one represents the smallest companies in the United States, the Vanguard Small Cap ETF, which is VB, and that one just invests in the smallest companies. And you might say, well, why would I wanna invest only in small companies and not in all the big ones? And I would say that could make sense for you for two main reasons. One of them is, you already own a lot of large cap stocks and you just wanna invest in some smaller companies. And the other reason is that over time, over long periods of time, more than 10 years, we're talking people who are gonna invest for 15 or 20 or 25, small cap stocks have been found and there are various studies that document this, that they have greater returns. They grow at a faster rate over long periods of time. So. Whereas you might get, for example, 12.5% from large cap stocks, you might get 14 or 15% from small cap stocks. Uh, these numbers are changing over time, they fluctuate, but small caps are an option for people who are perhaps willing to take on a little bit more risk that's involved with small cap investing, but are willing to exchange that for the potential of greater returns over time. Now let's move on to this blue one. So this here could be an international stock ETF. For example, the Vanguard International Stock ETF, VXUS, this invests only in stocks outside of the United States, but it does its best to track the index of all international stocks. So this kind of an ETF would make a lot of sense if either you didn't want to invest in companies in the United States for some reason, and you just wanted to invest internationally, 
or if you've already invested a lot in United States stocks or for example in the S&P 500 index and you felt like you wanted some exposure to other countries not in the US then you could invest in a index fund like Vanguard's VXUS and that would give you exposure to companies in Europe, in India, in China, in Brazil, and all over the world. So VXUS would give you international exposure only. And now we can move on here to this one here. Now this one would be a global ETF like the Vanguard Total World Stock Market ETF. The ticker symbol there would be VT and that invests in everything. So it invests in all the stocks included in VTI, which was the earlier Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund ETF that's just in the US. And it also invests in all the stocks in the Vanguard Total International Stock Market Index Fund ETF, VXUS, that we just talked about. So when you put those all together, you get the holdings of this Vanguard Total World stock market ETF, VT. And that is going to invest in more than 9,000 different companies all around the world. So if you just wanted one index fund ETF that invested a little bit in everything all over the world, you really can't do any better than VT. You know, I told you at the beginning that I was gonna help you simplify things. And what I've shown you here is five different options. And you know, you don't need to invest in all five. These are, you know, definitely if you did, for example, hypothetically invest a little bit or equal amounts in each one, you'd have a very diversified portfolio. But you'd also have potentially more diversification than you need. What it's, what it's better at showing you is that there are a lot of options available to you. Your goal is to decide which kind of stocks you want to invest in. Do you want to invest in the United States. And if you do, then your job is to ask, well, do I want to invest only in the largest companies? Do I want to invest only in the smallest companies? Or do I want to invest in all of the companies in the US? And once you've decided on that, then you're already gonna have a really good idea of which of these ETFs makes sense. And if you decide, no, no, I don't want to just stick to the US. I want exposure all around the world. Well, then you've got a few more, few more options like VXUS and VT. So that's your job. And I am going to write these down so that you will have your own little sheet here, your own little info with all this cool stuff in one place. So what we'll look at here is the first one that we mentioned was VTI US all sizes. Then the next one was VOO and that's the S&P S and P 500 and that's the largest largest companies based in the US right there. Then the next one we covered was VB, VB, and that is small cap. So those are all of those small companies based in the United States. Then we looked at VXUS, and that is international. So those are gonna be all the companies around the world except not those in the US. And finally, VT, which is global. And that is for investors who want to own a little bit of every company in every country in the world. There may be a few companies publicly traded that don't make it into that portfolio, but there aren't many. And so, you know, I hope that this info here is useful to you. Um, 
I've spent a lot of time thinking about the best way to present this, so even though it's just five, I feel like it's the essential five that if you really just wanted to get investing done, this could help you on your way. So think a little bit about it, try to figure out you know, whether that international diversification is something that you want. I'll tell you this, when I started investing, you know, I was in my 20s and I really didn't know, you know, what I should invest in. So I invested in some mutual funds that were actively managed. So they're not index funds. There's actually a portfolio manager or a team of portfolio managers and they spend a lot of time analyzing companies and trying to use their brains to figure out the best investments. And what I found is that the costs of management that I was paying those fund companies was actually pretty high and the performance over the long term was not that good. They weren't actually beating the market, uh, especially after the taxes and expenses. Uh, they were usually trailing the indexes by a small amount. International funds, the international ETFs, seemed a few years ago like a really smart thing to do because everybody talked about international diversification and they said you really should invest in other countries in the stocks of other countries because that was a good way to kind of hedge against the United States stock market because you know some US stocks could be overpriced or there could be a lot of volatility in the US and you really want to you know make sure you diversify to other countries. And so that was kind of some of the wisdom, some of the thinking. And if I just look, and I real, realize this is rear view mirror looking, but if I just look back over the last five or 10 years, investing internationally has been a train wreck. I mean, all of those index funds and all the managed funds internationally have severely underperformed stocks in the US. So you might say, well, that's just because in the past those stocks did poorly, but don't look backwards, look forwards. But one thing I've noticed since the beginning of 2022 is when the stock markets in the US started to crash, well, the stocks in you know China and the stocks in Brazil and the stocks in Russia and the stocks in India also crashed, um, and Europe as well. So, it's not like investing internationally really protected you or diversified you to save you from a crumbling US stock market. It seems like all the markets are linked now in a way that maybe wasn't so much the case 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. But now when I look at international diversification, it'd be kind of hard for me to make a strong argument that it's essential or that it will somehow save you when markets in the US start to crumble. I started investing internationally, I think it was in 2004, and I still hold one of the mutual funds that I started purchasing back then. And the only reason I never got rid of those shares is, well, two things. One is I thought for a long time that eventually they'd come back. And the second thing was, once you own enough of these, then selling them, you're gonna have a lot of capital gains tax. And I just didn't wanna sell stock that I didn't really need. I should say sell mutual funds and, uh, and then have to pay taxes. So I just did nothing. But an interesting thing is, over the last year or so, they've done really well. And that's because of a very interesting aspect of these, which are, these are, value-oriented mutual funds. So the investing team that selects the stocks in the mutual fund have a mandate, and that's only to select stocks that are very cheap on a number of metrics. So they look at different categories, and they won't buy stuff where the price that they're paying is really high in relation to what they're getting in return. So I will say that if I had given up on these international value mutual funds a year or two ago, I would have been very sorry because this year value has really come back. If you have any other questions, please put them in the comment section below. I will read all the comments I get and try to respond to them. I'm real glad you stopped by. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And also if you haven't subscribed yet, then hit the little subscribe button 
and then you'll, you know, get a heads up when I make new videos. I'm real glad you stopped by, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.